Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at the start of War One, the main causes. Um, so this is going to be our content. So the main causes. So there's an acronym for main: the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and the July Crisis, the Sklefin Plan, and Race of the Sea. So first of all, you have main causes. So acronym is main. M stands for militarism. So it's investing in building up of your army to prepare for war. A for alliances. So, you know, different countries supporting each other for mutual benefits. Uh, I imperialism. So occupying, exploiting smaller nations. So building up of empire. An example is Britain. Okay, so Great Britain had like the United Kingdom, where where it uh took over. You know, Australia, New Zealand, um, Canada, something like that. India. So nationalism is an intense form of patriotism or loyal to his or her country. So we're going to be looking at it uh for the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Okay, so uh, it happened on 8th, 28th of June, 1914. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand happened, and he was killed by Gavrilo Princip. Okay, he was a member of the Black Hand, Black, uh, Black Hand, uh, so a nationalist Serbian, a Serbian nationalist group. So basically, nationalist, okay, because uh, before, prior to this, there was the Balkan crisis, where um you know the allies so uh britain france um yeah essentially fought over the land controlled by the ottoman empire so and then serbia was part of it okay and then when they were freed from the ottoman empire rule they like they you know they hated to, they didn't want to join austria okay because essentially austria is also part of uh no not part of but they have strong influence over serbia and this group right here, this particular group called the Black Hand, didn't like this at all. So when the Archduke uh, visited Sarajevo or the, um, the capital of Serbia, he got shot by Gavrilo Princip. And essentially, the July Crisis happened. So the July Crisis is just a series of events that happens like a one month long, okay, after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. And right after, after that, you have 5th of July, okay, so Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany issued the blank check in quotation mark to Austria, so unconditional support. So what happened, what do you mean by the blank check is Kaiser Wilhelm relayed a message to Austria's messenger saying that, okay, go do whatever you want and we'll support you. So on 23rd of July, Austria issued an ultimatum to Serbia, demanding nearly impossible things. Well, as a response, Serbia declared, uh, I mean, Serbia declined, oops, I'm sorry, um, Serbia declined the ultimatum, and this is supposed to be Austria, okay, Austria declared war on Serbia, this right here is supposed to be Austria. Declared war on Serbia after it declined the ultimatum, okay, and then... Well, German, Germany, uh, okay, so the German ultimatum to Russia. So after Austria declared war in Serbia, Russia started mobilizing its troops, okay? And then essentially, essentially Germany was like, okay, Russia, you got to chill out. And we're going to send you an ultimatum. If you keep mobilizing within the next 48 hours, we're going to declare war on you. And yes, Russia declined the ultimatum and Germany declared war on Russia. <laughs> and it's... A series of events, as I said, like a domino effect. And 3rd of August, 1914, Germany declared war on France because France at that time was an ally on uh, Russia and France was in an alliance. And essentially, <laughs> uh, Britain declared war on Germany too. But after that, so German troops invaded Belgium. Okay, so it's marked the beginning of the Sklefen plan, which I'm going to be talking about real quick. So invaded the Belgium and Britain declared war on Germany because Britain did have an alliance with Belgium and it also had one with France. Okay, so here's a cartoon you can see here. So this little figure right here is Serbia and this is Austria. So it says, if you touch me, I'll, okay, so if you make a move, I'll, so basically it's saying, Serbia, okay, Serbia's threatening Austria. So if you touch me or if you try to attack me, my allies will attack you and then uh, and then Austria says, uh, if, if you make a move, if you try to kill me, then my, you know, my my ally, ally will attack you and your ally, something like that. So basically these Serbia, uh, Russia, 
France and Britain here was in an, an alliance, okay? So they were on the same side. And essentially, Austria and Germany are the two main fighters on the central power side. So the Schlieffen plan, okay? So it was proposed by Alfred von Schlieffen in 1905 and was later carried on by Helmut von Moltke in 1914. Well, essentially, Helmut was his successor. So uh, it used 60% of troops to invade France through Belgium, okay? Well, the original plan was to use 90% of the troops to invade France through Belgium, Holland, and Luxembourg. But uh, Helmut later then modified this Schlieffen plan. Uh, so he used 30% troops at the France-Germany border. And essentially, in the old Schlieffen plan, there were like a little bit, maybe 1-2% to the troops of France uh, to defend at the France-Germany border and, you know, the rest go attack. He used 10% troops to defend Russia-Germany border. So this hasn't changed at all. So, yeah, in the original Schlieffen plan, 90% troops you know, invade France through Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, uh, about 1% to 2% at the France-Germany border and 8 to 9% at the Russia-Germany border, okay? So, with the assumptions of Russia would be defeated, I mean, it would take six weeks to mobilize. So, uh, Schlieffen, uh, Schlieffen thought that Russia would take six weeks to mobilize since it's too big, since, you know, the country is too big. Uh, it also assumed that Belgium army would be easily defeated, so that would put up literally no resistance at all, or a little bit, but doesn't affect much. And assumed Germany would defeat France in six weeks. Well, this was one of the wildest assumptions ever. And, yeah, assumed Britain wouldn't join, would be discouraged and won't join the war. So, you know, after finishing France off, after finishing Belgium off, and then, you know, Britain wouldn't want to join in the war. So after defeating this, defeating France and Belgium, it would retreat troops back to the Eastern Front on Russia's side. So after six weeks to face against the Russian army, okay? That was its plan. Like, everything was supposed to go well, but no, it didn't. So as you can see here is an image of the Schlieffen plan. So Germany essentially cut troops through it's like a scythe attack, okay, through Luxembourg, uh, Belgium, and Holland, okay. So this was the old one, but later on, they didn't have the Luxembourg one, okay. They only went through the flat, okay, so the Flanders, okay, or the flat lands of Belgium to attack. And then they would essentially, uh, the first battle would happen at the town of Liege. Oh, no, wait, yeah, the town of Liege. So, uh, Schlieffen plan failed, White failed, okay? So, first of all, we have German exhaustion, okay? So, they move too fast. Like, they're, you know, they, um, so they, they move really fast. They tried to use a blitz attack, you know, to fight off, you know, to just quickly surprise attack the France and essentially defeat them quickly within six weeks. The second one is Belgian resistance. Okay, this was one of the most important ones since, you know, they thought Belgium would be easily defeated, you know, like just ran through them in you know, half a day to a day. But no, Belgium delayed Germany for around a month. Yeah, and that significantly slowed down the sleeping plan, gave France time to, you know, work the, the army up, gave Britain time to respond to Germany. Okay, uh, the British involvement. Okay, so it added troops to the France and Belgium side, you know, like the... A British expedition, exp, expeditionary force with the Belgian force at um, fighting against Germany force. Well, they eventually got defeated, but it slowed down Germany significantly. And also, Joffrey's leadership. So he led France really well. You know, he fought off um, Germany's sleeping plan really well, and that was one of the also the main points. So this one was probably uh, this one. The German missed Paris and chased after France to River Marne was probably the biggest mistake the German army did. Okay, so there was their objective was to capture Paris. Okay, and they pushed back. So they successfully pushed back France to the River Marne, and they yeah the France fled to River Marne. But instead of taking over Paris, which would have probably changed the entire course of the war, but then instead they chased after France to the River Marne, okay? And essentially, France, uh, the French troops and the British troops, uh, you know, they, they build up and then, you know, they, uh, they steadied up and they, they retaliated back, okay? They fought back and Germany lost the Battle of Marne. 
Okay, so Germany's supply lines were too long. Okay, so it was easily targeted, and since the troops were moving so fast, there were the supply lines was also exhausted. Okay, and they couldn't keep up with the German soldiers, which essentially led to uh, supply shortages. Okay, and the Russian offensive on the Eastern Front. Okay, so they forced German troops to back to defend. Okay, it's forced divert German troops back, which means less troops on the Western Front to carry out the Schlieffen Plan. So the race to the sea. So it's a series of battle in the plains of northern France. So basically, both powers trying to outflank each other. Okay, so this happened after the Battle of River Man. So it lost the Battle of River Man, and they retreated to the River Ains, which essentially started the race to the sea. So you know both powers trying to outflank each other, each moving you know towards the North Sea. Okay, so it was the mark. It marked the failure of the Schlieffen Plan because well since. France didn't get defeated so easily, the Schlieffen plan failed. And it also marked the start of attrition warfare, we know, where both sides dug trenches with machine guns and all that stuff, that which characterized the uh, entire war one throughout after that. And yeah, basically both sides out, try to outflank each other all the way to Newport, Belgium in the North Sea, which is really far. Like, as you can see here is a map. So basically, uh, it happened at around the River Ain, and they move northwards. Maybe this one. So the North Sea is up around here. Okay, the, so the River Ain. Okay, so the River Ain here. The Battle of Ain happened here, and then you know Germany tried to outflank France here, and you know they try to circle around. But France thought of the same thing. They circle, try to circle around Germany. Well, and then they met here, and then Germany tried to circle France here. You know, which would try to attack on this side, but then. France also did the same, so basically it's just mir they were mirroring each other. You know, Germany moved to the right, left. Uh, France moved to the left, and essentially they raced all the way to Belgium, okay, across Belgium to Newport in the North Sea. And you know, that at that point it was the end of the race to the sea, and other major battles also happened. So yeah, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you 